Okay, happy horse enthusiasts. It's me, Kimberly from the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. I just dug this video out from the archives. It was one I uploaded three years ago. And I thought, oh, let's just revisit this. This is back in 2020. It's winter. I was still with my ex. I love watching these videos. I cry. I miss my horses. I let someone I had trusted talk me into letting them go to a sanctuary in upstate New York, which I believe was not a sanctuary in upstate New York. I believe that her, her partner in crime uh, took my horses and brought them to slaughter. That's my true belief. And I was in a really bad place when she suggested I do this because I was in danger of losing the farm and I had four horses. Carl had left me and moved to Montana. I had no help, but I was doing it all on my own, giving them the best care in the world as always, paying my $1,800 rent every month in full on time, all my utilities and giving the best to all my animals there. This was my favorite part of horse keeping. I didn't mind. I didn't mind getting up at 3.30 in the morning and putting on my snow pants and winter gear and going out and being greeted by my beautiful horses and uh, mucking the paddock and filling up the water trough and throwing hay. I loved my life. Having the horses really made it fulfilling. But uh, I miss this. I do. I'm so grateful that Dakota came back to me. I do believe that, you know, Ty and Teddy ended up slaughtered. I no longer speak to this so-called friend. I think she had the best intentions. However, it was how she treated me when I questioned where are my babies. No one will, no one will respond to me except in anger and saying, get over it, get over my horses. And I just want pictures. I want to see that they're okay because I miss them. And I loved them and I gave them the best of everything. But when my friend responded that I was sick and I needed some mental health help <laughs> because I was feeling suicidal, actually, I really was. I felt like my whole purpose in life was gone. And remember, I went back to school to become a certified equine gestalt practitioner and was going to incorporate... Um, my beautiful horse friends into my work. And um, now they're, they were gone. Now they were gone. She convinced me to give my beautiful mayor, Luna, who I had put a lot of time and resources, a lot of money into. I mean, I train, I started her under saddle, but I did send her off for finishing work. Um, she convinced me that this horse was dangerous and to give her away. And I just, I was under so much pressure and stress and anxiety that I just, I listened to her. So I've made that mistake. I made bad choices, obviously, in men over and over and over again. I was always a codependent. I had a lot of abuse and trauma in my childhood. So I just didn't have the skills necessary, um, the emotional skills and, and, and uh, emotional uh I don't know, well-being to protect myself and not get into these situations. It's common when you have child abuse uh, that you've survived to, to have these issues. You know dysfunction, so that's what you live in. This man right here is really the master manipulator. He likes to find women that have good jobs, good careers, make money, and it has allowed him to just float through life. He's never had to finish anything. In fact, he is a self-sabotager. He's a brilliant man, absolutely brilliant. Um, has a lot of ideas and he's passionate about them, but has zero follow through. And when I found it odd that everywhere he went at first, they loved him and embraced him and then they hated him. I think because he, 
he's a manipulator and he wears a mask and people fall for that mask just like I did. And then you discover who they really are. And I was not on my best behavior the last five years of our relationship because when I discovered what he truly was about, but I felt stuck, I was tolerating it. But at the same time, my lizard brain was would not shut off. Like I was in fight or flight and freeze like constantly. I was fearful. I was, I felt sheer terror because I knew that I was with someone who was a detriment to my stability, you know, but I was too afraid to leave. It's all of that. But as I went through the certification program and worked on healing my inner child, I got better and better and better at um, feeling like I could do it. I just didn't expect to be left abruptly. I mean, abruptly and to take care of everything like he just left. But anyways, so here's a man who moved out to Montana, has been through various jobs. He's almost 60 and he's doing construction again. I mean, Montana winters are not easy. And he went back to drinking after three years of sobriety. And <laughs> my goodness, uh, ended up having to go to detox and rehab. And I'm sure there was some manipulation in there too. Like he probably got threatened as far as his employment. So if you go into detox or the hospital or rehab, they, I don't think they can fire you. So that was a smart move on his part. I'm sure very well thought out, but what happened was he hit the bottle heavy when he went back. So a few short months later, he's in kidney failure, I think, or he's got something going on with his kidneys. So imagine my surprise. I have been very kind to him because it's in my, it's, it's in me. I, you know, I'm about forgiveness. I don't forget and I will never cast my pearls before swine ever again, but I was kind. I'd answer his phone calls. You know, I interacted with him. I felt for him. I know that his inner child is wounded, right? But then the manipulation started again. And the last call two weeks ago, it just, my hair went up and I'm like, oh, he's looking for a way out. He's got to find a soft place to land. He's probably feeling me out. Well, sorry, buddy. Right. And I couldn't even pay attention to him on the phone. I know he could tell I was distracted because I didn't care. That part of me was done. I was on to him. Then a week and a half later, I get a text message. It's not even a message. It's a link to a GoFundMe. He's trying to raise $100,000 to support himself in his journey to health. Well, I don't know. That, I prayed on that one, and I came to the conclusion that, no, I don't think so. You made your bed. You really did. You weren't there for me, buddy. So I'm sorry. And I'm, you know... Anybody else, trust me, I donate, I give to the homeless. I don't care. I'll hand over my last 50 bucks to a homeless person. I, you know, I'm okay with that. But when you keep making the same mistakes and you use it as a form of manipulation, I'm done. So um, I've overcome a lot. Praise be God and only because of God. And when I surrender to God completely, Everything opened up for me, infinite possibilities. So much wonderful has happened in my life, and I'm so grateful for that. And it's November 6th, and America has spoken. We, the people, have spoken. We have our country back. It's time for reform, and I'm not trying to get political here, but I did not sleep last night. I had to, I could not close my eyes until I knew that we had secured our freedom. So very happy about that. Um, Kamala was not in women's best interest. That's a state thing when it comes to abortion. I'm a pro-lifer, but that being said, it's a state by state thing. And, you know, for me, I, I marched, I put my money where my mouth is. I marched as a 15 year old in Washington DC as a pro-lifer. So it's a hard no for me as far as murdering babies. I don't think so. Millions of abortions have transpired. Listen, if you don't know how to not get pregnant in this day and age, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't. Don't use murdering babies as a way to, uh, as, as a form of birth control. That's just where I am with that. And I don't care if I offend you. You can unsubscribe and move along. I'm fine. But anyways, I am, I'm thrilled that we are going to uncover the deep state and clean, clean out the swamp. It needs to happen because our, our, uh, government that we supposedly we didn't elect 
but we did this time. But it it's not those aren't who's running our country. It is the the elites, the globalists. So thank you. Thank you, God, for this election. I'm just really optimistic for the first time in many years. So anyway, so this is revisiting the past. This was my daily life, this barn with all my beautiful horses. And um, I, uh, I am so, so very grateful for the life I lead now. I miss my babies. I do. I miss my Tallulah, my little pig. I, I miss my chickens. I love them. Dakota, the one you see right there eating, he's the one in most of my videos. He came back to me. When I met Dakota, I knew he was a special horse. And I went out to meet him because I'd seen his paper in on Craigslist. And I saw a photo of him. And I'm like, I need to go see him. I'm not going to go buy him. I just need to meet him. And after I met him, I realized, oh, there's my Luna girl. My baby, I got her as a two-year-old, started her under saddle. When she left, she was nine. Um, there's my Dakota, dirty as usual. <laughs> He's a dirty boy. And yes, he turns his head sideways when he eats. He still does that. He always did it. His teeth are fine. It's a habit now. I bet at one time he had a bad, had bad teeth perhaps. And so he developed that habit, we guess. Hard to say, but gosh, I've had every dentist up in that mouth. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, but yeah, so Dakota, I ended up, I had to buy him. I had, I needed him. I had to have him. And he's come back to me multiple times throughout um, the past multiple years because he's meant to be with me. There's my buddy, Ta uh, Teddy. I did so much work in the last year after Carl left. I had in the, these areas, I had uh, stone dust brought in. I had dump trucks fall and I leveled everything so there wouldn't be mud. I worked so hard as one person making this land look so nice because I was supposed to buy it. Well, I say I, my, my friend and I, this was going to be our dream. But I just want to say thank you, everyone, for supporting this channel. Um, I'm in my 60s now. I live a very simple life, but your support helps me to take care of Dakota in the proper way and also to offer to many people. I do my healing work and I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions, coaching and group healing work and I do it by donation and most of the time the people that seek me out can't afford to pay for the work and that never stops me. So just know that your support, whether you're buying my book, The Happy Horse Keeper, which is available on Amazon, I'll put the link in the description box. Um, whether you're buying that book or you're buying my coursework on Etsy or any of my stuff or supporting me on Patreon, thank you.